The Gears of War franchise is about the humans of the planet Sarah desperately fighting for their survival against the Locusts, underground dwelling creatures that would drive mankind near extinction, destroying the planet in the process just to try and decimate them, and in the end defeating the Locust threat at great cost. One of the men most responsible for averting the extinction of man is also a controversial figure within the series. A man who's done many questionable things, but in my book is one of the most underappreciated characters of the series. Chairman Richard Prescott will be the final political and military commander-in-chief for the Coalition of Ordered Governments, or COG. What would be the last government standing to fight off the Locust Horde and eventually beat them? Prescott came from quite the prestigious family having a history of politics, and Richard himself would join the army and gain many medals for his service. Although he didn't see much actual action because his family's political connections kept him away from most of the fighting, also he didn't really earn a lot of the rewards he so proudly displayed on his chest. He managed to become deputy chairman of the COG, but after the horrific slaughter of mankind just 10 months into the locust invasion of the surface, the previous chairman died of a heart attack, making him the highest ranking human alive in the middle of a war against extinction where most of the world had already been lost. Prescott has a complicated reputation, mainly because two months into his position he ordered the Hammer Strikes, which was basically using a network of orbital laser cannons to destroy cities outside of the Jacinto Plateau, the only place where the Locusts couldn't burrow up from. The strikes didn't just hit cities already taken, but also the ones under attack, killing millions across the globe and stranding others that couldn't make the three days deadline to evacuate to Jacinto. Everywhere was burned to ash that filled the sky for weeks. It was nuclear level destruction across 90% of the land masses. He initiated the Fortification Act, which was total martial law across Jacinto and the disbanding of due process and civilian courts. He started drafting men en masse and incentivizing volunteers by withholding food from anyone who wouldn't enlist into the lifeboat program and become a conscript. Prescott also started the breeding farms, which was taking all women who could bear children and even young girls pumped with hormones and either use artificial insemination or forced sexual intercourse to impregnate them often offering women to high-ranking soldiers or physically abled ones to breed better kids. These places were more like prisons than anything else, incentivizing volunteers with food to keep birth rates up and rebuild as much of the human population, and were often abusive places where a lot of rape occurred. A fraudulent military career, a point mainly due to circumstances, wiping out most of the world and getting millions to volunteer with food to controversial programs after said destruction he caused would mainly be the legacy of Richard Prescott. Although it would be wrong and more than a little dishonest not to mention the following. The reason why Prescott ordered the hammer strikes is because the Locusts were poised to completely win the war in a matter of months. A fact that was stated pretty much by every one of his military and scientific advisors in the book Jacinto's Remnant. The war with the Locusts had completely gutted the COG's ability to organize any capacity to fight back, and with their ability to burrow up just about anywhere on the planet except Jacinto, the Locust victory was assured unless they consolidated to hold the line. Prescott knew the hammer strikes would not stop the Locusts, but slow them down long enough to mount an actual defense. In fact, in the book, he remains by the phone at his desk as the clock is ticking down, hoping that some news would come of Locust leadership ready to negotiate or someone would come up with a better solution they can implement. He knew full well no one would forgive him for what would happen, and he never expected them to. It was a last ditch effort mainly just to buy time to figure out and implement something better, such as the emulsion countermeasure that would end the war but took 17 years to complete and use. The Fortification Act and Operation Lifeboat were also terrible but there was not enough resource to just hand out to people not contributing to the war effort. A war that was for humanity's survival. And if society broke down in Jacinto, the locusts would have wiped out mankind for sure. The breeding farms too were horrible, but the vast majority of humanity was dead. We're talking hundreds upon hundreds of millions gone. Numbers were dropping fast and they needed troops, workers, and a population in general to sustain anything. 
Then there is the island of Azura. This was a small paradise island slash safe house for the Cog's elite to hide out a major catastrophe such as the Locust War. Prescott knew about this place pretty much immediately and had complete access to it. Azura had the Cog's best soldiers and technology to protect the place, not to mention an artificial hurricane around the island to shield it. Yet not once in any of the books does Prescott ever think to just run off and hide there. He visited a few times only to check on that super weapon he was having built there to kill the locusts and remained in Jacinto to keep the bulk of humanity together and fighting this losing war for 15 years. Even after they sank Jacinto and flooded the locust hollow, pretty much destroying their army, he still stayed with them to rebuild on an island chain, only leaving when the lampets started cropping up these hideously mutated creatures forcing mankind to turn to nomads on ships only going to Azura because he needed that super weapon up now more than ever. He seems genuinely regretful for a lot of his actions in the books, but only ever does it because he felt like no one else could make hard decisions in this very bad situation where there were no correct answers. Now, does this excuse what Prescott did and made it okay? Well, that's the wrong question. Of course it's still horrible, and you should think it is, but you, one has to remember what situation he suddenly found himself in. Prescott is someone who never earned his position in life, yet when thrust into the highest ranked position in the government for the most pivotal war for mankind's existence, he didn't buckle or break under the immense pressure. He didn't flee to the Paradise Island even after they sent Jacinto. He stayed there for 15 years and fought hard to hold mankind together. He is a complicated yet very nuanced character, one you understand, but not necessarily like. Now, one final thing I wanted to address was how the developers of the new games, who are called The Coalition, treated Prescott's character in Gears of War tactic. My fellow tyrants, today, the Coalition of Ordered Governments strikes back. These unclean beasts. These locusts will advance no further. I, Chairman Prescott, have authorized a full planetary strike from our Hammer of Dawn weapons arsenal. On my order, the COG has placed infantry detachments in key cities to mop up any surviving locusts. For those citizens unable to evacuate to safety in time, the Coalition appreciates your sacrifice. They show him off as a sleazy politician and did not convey just how difficult this decision to destroy most of the world actually was for him. A decision Prescott knew he'd live with for the rest of his life. Yet the coalition seriously downplays the emotional and physical toll it took on the world and especially the one it took on Prescott. So that was complex characters. If you like this video and are new to the channel, subscribe and check out my other video essays over analyzing Shira and music analysis videos.